Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I wanted to talk about Shamima Begum and the legal aid situation. Well, firstly, um, we need to know that the British passport is not a right. British citizens are not entitled to a British citizenship. Um, they, it is just evidence. The passport is just evidence of British citizenship, but it doesn't entitle you to British citizenship. That's the first thing. Second thing is that the passport is the property of the Crown and it can be confiscated, taken away at any time. It can be cancelled at any time. Those are the first two important things. Now, with regard to deprivation of citizenship, it can be done providing you're not rendering the person who you're depriving citizenship of as being stateless. Now, I understood or I understand that Shamima Begum was made stateless when her citizenship was deprived because the Home Secretary thought she could assume Bangladeshi um, nationality and she couldn't. So technically, they cannot deprive her of citizenship. Now, the legal aid thing is a different matter. I understand from the Telegraph that the family has employed Gareth Pierce, who is a top human rights lawyer. Now, I don't, if they've employed her, that the assumption to me is that they're paying her. I don't know if she is going to be accepting legal aid for her services. I understand that the legal aid um, administration have agreed that Shamima Begum is eligible for legal aid and that she must initiate an appeal to get funding, but I don't know if that is the case. That is why we cannot just listen to the tabloids. We need to read papers like The Telegraph, Economist, Financial Times. It's okay to read The Sun and The Mirror and The Independent, but always try to balance it with other papers so we get a broader idea of what's going on here and not sensationalism and not trying to build up angst and frustrating in an already delicate environment because of Brexit. It's not right to do that. So um, trying to set the record straight um, with regard to legal aid, it isn't one, ca one um, cap fits all. Um, if it's a non if it's a mainstream case or a non asylum you're not entitled to um not entitled to legal aid the windrush people they just missed it because i believe that they made the cuts on legal aid in 2013 so all those windrush applicants were unable to take advantage of it uh, prior to 2013 i believe there was 22,000 according to the freedom of information act um, 22,000 before to um, immigration applications before 2013 but since then there's only been three awarded so it's only in particular cases I think human trafficking cases you qualify for um, you qualify for legal aid and certain special cases which Shamima may fall into that category the thing is is that they They've probably made a big boo-boo in the sense that, you know, they've written these laws. The only thing is, is that does her um, statelessness supersede, um, ah, oh, what is it, supersede, you know, the safety to the country? Um, you know, because they, you can be denied citizenship um, based on things like treason or colluding with what they call the enemy or... Um, going to fight with um, terrorists and all that kind of stuff. They can deprive you of citizenship there. But I'm wondering whether or not statelessness supersedes that or whether it's equal to it or whether that is what they are trying to find out. I don't know which is which. Um, but as we can see from the tabloids, they're really making a meal out of this. Let me make sure I wanted to say... Um, I wanted to read something to you. What was it? The reasons why an individual can be stripped. Um, deprivation, of super, deprivation of citizenship is conducive to the public good and will not make the person stateless. The person obtained his or her citizenship fraudulently via 
false representation or the conceal some, ooh, concealment of material fact. The person has conducted themselves in a manner which is seriously prejudicial to the vital interests of the United Kingdom, which may be where Shamima Begum falls in, has reasonable grounds to believe that the person is able to become a national or another country's or territory under its laws. So that is where Savvy Javid thought that she would fall into. She, um, at the time, he thought she was a Bangladeshi national, so he thought she could have fallen into that slot. But she can't because Bangladeshi nationals, they're not taking the uh, nationality of the mother, so they can't do that. Um, so it does mean that she's stateless. Was there anything else I needed to? I wrote down this. A Home Office Freedom and Information response in June 2016 revealed that there had been 81 dep deprivation of citizenship orders made in the years 2006 to 2015. 36 orders were made on the grounds that deprivation was conducive to public good. 45 orders were made on the grounds that the Home Secretary was satisfied that people had used fraud or false representation to gain British citizenship by registration or naturalisation. And in December 2013, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reported a significant increase in the use of deprivation powers in 2013, in part due to British citizens travelling to fight in Syria. So we have a kind of a intricate... Uh, intricate thing. I'm just making sure that there's nothing really important that I don't want to miss. Um, apparently, you uh, you know, if you've had your passport denied or cancelled, you can appeal it via judicial review. You know, judicial review costs thousands, so you have to have a really good reason if you are going to appeal it. Um, yeah, um, I think that's all. I think, like I said, all you've got to do is make sure that you get a balanced um, viewpoint on this because it is easy to get caught up in all the hype. And when they're saying, you know, we're already feeling vulnerable at the moment, and when they're talking about, you know, um, she's using public money and public funds, there are hundreds of thousands, we don't know if that's true. Um, like I said, I don't know how Gareth Pierce, if they're paying her, or if they can afford to pay her, or whether um, she's she's going to get legal aid for the case. But whichever it is, you can guarantee that they've looked into the reasons why. And the main reason is really the cock up of the making her stateless. If they hadn't made her stateless, they would have had a case um to deprive her of citizenship but under under that they can't do anything about it as far as i can see i can't see how the, well it all, like i said it all depends on whether or not um what was one of those reasons um conducive to the public good or um has conducted them in a manner which is seriously prejudicial to the vital interests of the united kingdom it all depends whether statelessness is deemed more a priority over seriously prejudicial to the vital interests of the united kingdom that's what it's going to depend on so your guess is as good as mine anyway i just wanted to run that by you um like i would say Always look at different sources. Don't just bank on one one side of the newspaper, the tabloids, and look at it and say, yeah, and go crazy. Um, just try to create a balance so that you have a good idea of what is true and what is sensationalism. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.